Hi, I'm Old North Specialist Jackson Crawford. Beginning in 1955, after a large fire wreaked some havoc in the Bryggen Pier or Dock area of Bergen, Norway, a series of, uh, to date, more than 650 inscriptions in runes from a couple centuries after the Viking Age have been uncovered there. Now, these inscriptions are in the so-called medieval runes, which are a late development of the Viking Age runic alphabet called the Younger Futhark. Now, I've been asked to do a video uh, introducing you to medieval runes by so many people that I can't remember any particular individual who's asked about it. But today, that's exactly what I'm going to do at Popular Request, is cover a little bit about the so-called medieval runes. So remember that in the Viking Age, the Younger Futhark consists of 16 letters, four of which have uh, redundancies. There's basically there's two A's and there's two R's. So already in the late Viking Age, what you've got is some simplification, of, or not simplification, but some efficientization of that system. So the very last letter of the Younger Futhark, called Ur, comes to represent not an R from an old Germanic Z, but instead the vowel Y, U, which actually brings it in line with the rest of the system, where each of the letters has a name that begins with the sound that it represents. This had been the only letter that uh, represented the sound that it ended with. So we end up with one new vowel letter, and then also the fourth letter of the Younger Futhark, Os, which had represented through the Viking Age a long nasal A, or a vowel derived from A by umlaut. Uh, that long nasal A ah comes to be long O by natural sound change, and so the name of that letter becomes Os, and so it comes to represent an O rather than a long nasal A. So now we have two new vowel letters. Uh, by the way, for that long nasal A becoming O, that's also uh, a, a good example of that is actually in the name uh, Olaver. So that comes from something that was represented in English, Old English borrowings as Anlav. So you can see the, the nasality of the A from the N there. Also from uh, what in Old Irish I believe would be pronounced Auli. But you can see from the M uh, the nasalization of the A originally. So yes, uh, that's this very sound changes how we get the name Olaf. Uh, speaking of which, the other day someone asked me why I drew the snowman in this movie to have such angry eyes or something, and I thought, well, this is strange. Occasionally kids think that I was the voice of one of these characters, but I've never been confronted as being the, the artist, right? All I did was do the runes for that movie and write a perfectly metrical skaldic death song for the snowman that they never recorded. Anyway, all right. So natural sound change and the acrophonic principle get us two letters that have changed values and actually become a more efficient system. Now, the medieval runes don't actually have to add beyond these 16 letters. This is still the core alphabet, is these 16 letters of the younger Futhark. And when you see Futharks or alphabets written out in medieval runes, it's still 16 letters. But the additional thing that you get after the Viking Age to get into the medieval runes is you get optional additional letters to cover almost all of the sounds of Old Norse by adding dots or by using um, either a complete side-to-side -side stroke across the stave for the vowels or just a stroke on one side or the other, the vowels, so that you wind up with eight potential vowel letters instead of just four and 14 potential consonant letters instead of just 10 and with no redundancies like there are in Viking Age Junker Futhark. Now, again, you don't have to use the expanded set. You can still use just the 16 um, from late Younger Futhark, but you wind up with an expanded potential set of letters to eliminate a lot of the ambiguity inherent in Viking Age Younger Futhark.
And let me give you a quick word in the usual way from my friends and partners at Grimfrost, and then I'll show you some examples of medieval runes drawn from the Brigand inscriptions from Bergen, Norway. <laughs> Now there are good pictures of the inscriptions that I'm going to talk about, but I don't have uh, permission to share them. They are at runesdb.eu, and uh, I think they belong to the uh, the museum at uh, Bergen and Bergen. I don't, you know, I, I I don't like using pictures without an explicit permission to share them. Uh, but it is worth uh, going to the website and looking at them, or if you can go to uh, Bergen, Norway and see a lot of these in person at the Bergen Museum. Um, these inscriptions have catalog numbers, as so many do. Uh, actually, the catalog number always begins with the N, meaning Norway, but we could ignore that because they are all from Norway. And the uh, Bergen ones start with a B. So let's look at a few of these. I, I think these are fun because they show us just how every day the runes could be, right? I think so often today because of how they look you know, kind of mysterious and cool and angular. People tend to think of inscriptions as having deep esoteric meanings, whereas so many of these are just pretty everyday. And even Valentiny for our upcoming holiday. So B644, we read, An ex wo konu mans at meher thiki kalder elter, en ek em vinner, vifs thessa. I so love another man's woman that fire seems cold to me but I am a friend of this woman. <laughs> so here we can see there's actually a bind rune on A and N uh, come off of the same uh, stave. So the practice of bind runes continues well into the medieval runic period. We see that most words do not have separations between them, but sometimes we kind of haphazardly get a series of dots that separate words, but not consistently. We see that they're still typically not writing two letters of the same kind in a row, so mons with one N instead of two, thicky with one K instead of two. We see pretty consistent use of the dotted I rune for an E, which would not have been done in the Viking Age, but they're still not using all of the optional expanded letters. Um, notice Calder Elder, uh, those Ds are still written with the T rune. Let's look at another one, B390. Ingebjörg Uni mer thor ek var i Stavanger. Ingebjörg loved me when I was in Stavanger. So here we see again not fully consistent use of the expanded set. Uh, probably the most consistently used uh, dotted letter is the one for E because there's a lot of E's in Old Norse and a lot of I's so it's worthwhile to distinguish them for ease of reading. We see no barriers between words in this one and one pretty interesting Phonological thing is that the T in Stavanger is written as a thorn, maybe reflecting some kind of uncertainty by a carver who realizes that this isn't a uh, an aspirated T, like uh, the T in the word tear, which is the name of the T rune. Let's look at B149, which is kind of fun, a little scoldy. Githa seger at thu gakheim. Githa woman's name says that you go home. Now this is imperative. This is the command word go. Gak. You go home. This is a perhaps a message accompanied by a one of those old hair curlers that uh, or, or what, what, whatever the you know cartoon wives beat their husbands with. Um, kind of interesting thing here. You notice that Sagir says we have the G written as an H. That presumably reflects the uh, fricative nature of the G. It's really more like Sahir than the way I typically say it, Sagir. We see, uh, this is actually pretty typical in Norwegian, that um, an E created by I umlaut from A is written as ash instead of as E, as it typically is in our uh, standard Old Norse, the Old Norse of Iceland. Uh, let's look at B39. Smidor sard. Now, this is going to be a little bit blue, but many of the inscriptions actually are. In fact, I haven't even picked the bluest ones, believe me. So, Smither, a man's name, or 
possibly his job, Smith. Uh, notice the epithetic vowel there, ur. That is something that, of course, shows up in modern Icelandic, modern Icelandic smither from Old Norse smither, also in some Norwegian dialects today. He had coital knowledge of, there's also a word that starts with F that you could translate this as, uh, a woman named Vigdis. So quite blue, as is this one, B11. Fairlig erfuð sin bully. Um, you know, I wasn't raised to talk frankly about uh, private body parts, so I will uh, ask you to pardon my French. La chat is horrible. Uh, may le monde viril uh, make the journey. So, someone perhaps um, faced with an unpleasant woman or or who has a friend who is interesting. Now, uh, by the way, that word foo, meaning uh, a very private part of a woman's anatomy, uh, you may notice that, of course, the first three letters in the runic alphabets are foo, which has led some people to think that there is some kind of uh, relation there, that potentially there's some kind of old a sentence or something in the, 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 the order of the letters that starts with a very private part of a woman's anatomy. Um, this isn't a completely fringe idea. Uh, actually, Anatoly Lieberman has speculated about this, and that's t talk about as respectable as it gets in runic studies. I don't know, personally. I'm too much of a prude to, uh, to go down that road too far. I'll leave you with one that's a little uh, romantic and not, not too blue. B17, Ostmin, kiss me. My love, kiss me. And one thing that's kind of fun here is you actually see that word kiss. It looks like the English word kiss, K-I-S, with the second S not written in your typical runic way. Um, but this reflects an unrounding of that vowel U, written Y, which you would expect in Icelandic. So maybe this is an Icelandic writer in Norway who's asking his, his Norwegian lover to kiss him. Also interesting to note that on the reverse side of this stick, there is a uh, runic alphabet of Futhark written out, and it is Futhark Kniest Bimli, again, just the 16 letters, even though in this, uh, in this time when this was, was carved, the later medieval period, there was already the expanded set available. They just weren't considered as like canonical letters as the original 16 inherited from younger Futhark. Well, I hope that's been a reasonably interesting introduction to the question of medieval runes for you. Hope you'll check out some of the other videos about runes on this channel, in which I often try to answer people's questions and uh, rain on people's parade, <laughs> I guess. And for now, from beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the best. thars <laughs> alma. Arnlending Arbendu Miskuns mer hate nonu Morth is fisks liu gorda Oft mer thot on rifta I throta bad drotning Beta hos jo huitum Hrens emk nu vot benum I was born where the Arundel people bent their bows. The summer of the lies of the ice woman is my hot murder. Often the queen bade me perform feats, though I was without clothing. Now I am wet bait for the wolf next to the reindeer's white bones. <laughs>